Before the internet was really a thing here in the UK, we had this, teletext. Now, teletext, for those who have never seen it, was a function of British television networks, where you essentially had a button on your remote control, and it took you to a page that's very much like this, sort of like an old BBC micro from the 1980s. And essentially, it was like a interactive newspaper. All the codes in the corner, you see it's got P458 there. That is literally the page of the actual whole system that this was found on. And there were quite a few, I remember, like 101 was the news headlines, 113 was the listings for, uh, for ITV or Granada, depending on if you were in the regions at the time. Uh, there was the sport pages, there was a letters page, there was a stocks and shares page. It was essentially like a newspaper on your television. Now, they normally have quizzes, but instead, thanks to a website called castleteletext.com, which sadly, if you go type that by itself, says XML doesn't exist kind of thing. If you want to search on Google for it or go to the Nightmare fan page, however, you can have a link to this very own, really nice time capsule of an old interactive adventure game that you could play on your television. Um, so essentially, we're going to be playing through this today, going through all of the options, seeing all kinds of manners of conclusions, and yes, there will be voices. I'm not saying I'm going to sound exactly anywhere like the great Trey Guard himself or any of that nature, but I'll certainly do my best to make this as fun as possible. So, what you go, Eagle Quest, a nightmare adventure. This week we have a new Eagle Quest game to play. A new adventure will appear here on Wednesday afternoon, 29th December. Bamboozle will return in January. Bamboozle was essentially like a pub quiz. Press red to enter the mysterious world of Castle Nightmare. Well, we're not playing on the television, so instead, I'll click my mouse. To the Ice Palace of Ayasandre, a nightmare quest for Christmas. This is an adventure game using the fast text colour buttons on certain televisions. Once you begin your adventure, you will undertake a fantastic journey. Mistakes may force you to retrace your steps. Only perseverance, wit, and courage will take you to the end of the nightmare trail. And I'm afraid the Mensa and chess pages don't exist, but I can just to give you an idea of what Tower Tax was like with the interactive newspaper format. So let's begin the adventure. You stand before Nightmare Castle, with you as Treyguard, master of the quest. Welcome, adventurer. Your quest will take you to the great northern ice field, a frozen realm inhabited by ferocious polar bears. You travel to rescue a captive maiden. I will aid you when I can. You will hear my voice at time of need. Hold to the adventurer's code. Answer truthfully. Choose wiles wisely. Use force only in direst need. And remember, cheats never prosper. Tregard indicates to the northern trail. Pulling your cloak tightly about you, you stride into the freezing wind. Ahead you see a tall figure. It is Hordris the Confuser, magician extraordinaire. Yeah, I should say ordinaire, not ordinary. Magician ordinary. It's magician average. Didn't have the same gravitas, does it? Imprecations! Is this the best Tregard could find? One doubts if you are wise enough for such a quest. One will test you. Tell me, puny adventurer, those who dwell in this land are known to outsiders as Eskimos. How are they more properly called? Bunwit. T tidbit? Well, you could get away with this in the 90s? Chuzzlewit and Inuit. Well, the answer is actually obvious, but what happens if you choose the wrong one? Let's find out. Hardris shakes his head sadly. One's worst fears are confirmed. One must go and find another to undertake this task. Farewell, ignorant adventurer. He turns and leaves you standing alone in the freezing wind as the snows fall more heavily around you. You wander through the snow as it falls ever harder and harder. All paths vanish in the white torrents that swirls about you. 
You tire rapidly as the warmth drains from your body. After long, confusing wandering, you feel yourself losing consciousness and falling into the deep, soft snow. You have been found wanting. This time your quest may not succeed, but take courage. You have journeyed far and attempted that of which many only dream. Next time you set foot beyond the walls of Castle Nightmare, who knows whence your path may lead. Restart. Okay. So, quite clearly, in the best spirits that demon souls, dark souls... And Bloodborne would generate many, many years later. In this game, once you fail, you are dead. There is no messing around. There is no sugarcoating it. You are deceased. No longer with us. Run down the curtain and join the choir invisible. So, the answer is actually Inuit. Ah! Ah! Says Horace. An enlightened adventurer. Remarkable. Listen then. One's foolish daughter, Sidris, has been captured by Alessandre the Ice Sorceress. Her palace lies far to the north. She awaits my rescue mission and has set magic traps for me. She will not expect you. There is slight chance you might get through. One gifts you with a spell. Heat. You may use it only once. Good fortune. You set out across the ice sheet along the path Hordris indicates. Soon he is lost behind and you can see nothing but ice and snow in every direction. The chill enters your bones and you shiver in every limb. Then ahead you spot a small white dome. An igloo! Do you? Go in or keep moving. Because, I'm, because no doubt it contains something really important to actually win the quest, I'm going to keep moving and see what happens. <coughs> Pardon me. Whoa, it's, it's Santa Claus wearing pink. Well, that escalated quickly. Where did that come from? In this Arctic wasteland, you cannot survive long without food. Sheltering in a frozen ice cave, you come across a ragged hermit. I have food, but share it only with the wise, he says. You may eat of my bread, but only if you can answer me this. The North people believe in a hammer god. Which day is his? April Fool's Day, Winter Solstice, Halloween or Thursday? Well, quite clearly, if we choose any of the others, it's probably, it's probably just going to result in instant death. So let's choose the correct answer. You are temporarily refreshed, but the icy wind blows you harder from the north. Your fingers and toes go numb and your vision blurs. The icy cold extends its reach into your very lungs. It seems that you can go no further. What do you do? Turn back, press on, or spell casting? I get the feeling the spell is going to be needed to complete the quest, so we're going to bravely push on. Summoning your last reserves, you push forward and suddenly the blizzard falters. Ahead of you is... Miraculously revealed, the Ice Palace of the Sorceress. Its crystal walls, carved from ice, tower hundreds of feet into the air. Within lie the, lies the captive, not lie the captive, and the enemy. A desperate final effort propels you to the entrance. Inside the palace, a great hall of ice stretches out before you. At the far end, A. Sandre stands on a high platform beneath a glittering ice chandelier. Beside her, frozen in a block of ice, is Sidris. So, cries A. Sandre, that old fool Hodris thinks he can outwit me by sending a young fool in his place. Absurd! She raises her hands above her head. She is casting a spell, do you? Spell casting heat. Run away! Or attack. We're going to spell. Hey, it's the bomb from Final Fantasy VII. Invoking the spell conjures a ball of red light to form in your right hand. It pulses with warmth as you look upon and try to identify a target upon which to use it. Do you aim for the sorceress? The frozen captive or the ice chandelier? 
Let's try the saucer it. The red sphere flies straight and true towards the evil figure of your enemy. She deftly bats it aside, causing it to crash out through the ice wall. With a malicious grin, she unleashes her own spell, which strikes you full in the chest. You feel a strange tingling spread through your body. Whoa! <laughs> you look down at yourself. You seem to be wearing an ill-fitting dinner jacket and baggy trousers. <laughs> Because of my composure. I don't fix it to the chuck in baggy trousers. Baggy trousers. Baggy trousers. <laughs> yes, we know who he was listening to when he wrote this, wrote this sketch, don't we? Then you notice that your nose seems to have got longer and your arms shorter and the floor closer. Yes, you've been turned into a penguin. Oh, dear. Says Trigon, I hope you like fish dinners. Try again. Oh! You have been found wanting. This time, yeah, we've, we've seen that screen before. Okay, so I got to the end without going into the igloo. So purely out of curiosity, what do you get for going inside the igloo? So let's quickly skip through these, because we've already gone through what happens on these screens. It's like Metal Gear Solid. Okay, so let's go into the igloo. Inside the igloo, it is slightly warmer. You find a collection of objects left behind by the owner. A sack. Opening it, opening it you find it to be full of greasy, smelly lumps of something unpleasant. Probably that kebab that I had last night. A pair of snowshoes. A white fur coat. Which do you take? The sack. The snowshoes. The fur coat. Now you see. If I was playing this seriously. I'd know that this is going to be a red herring. It seems far too obvious. That you're in the middle of the Arctic. And you find a fur coat. But I'm going to find out what happens anyway. Wrapping the coat around you and feeling warm and snug, you step out into the snow again. Heading ever northwards, you come to a divide in the path. You may travel down the valley or along a high, rocky ledge. Which route do you take now? Let's try the low road. The valley path is filled with snowdrifts, and as you push forward, you find the snow reaches your knees. The fur coat is weighed down by heavy ice. You step boldly forward onto a slab of ice. It gives way beneath you, and frozen snow closes over your head. Oh dear, says Tregard. Frosted adventurer, and not a microwave in sight. Ooh, nasty. And purely for science, again, I do believe that this is going to be a red herring. I do not believe that this item is of any use to you. It just seems far too obvious. And as anyone who's seen the show will tell you, if it's an obvious solution, a lot of the time it's a massive red herring. But I want to prove it, see if the guy really did embrace the spirit of the show. So let's go this time. On the high road. You climb up above the snowy valley. Across bare rock jutting through the ice. At the top of the rise you pause to look down. And turn at a snarling sound behind. A large polar bear is growling. And forcing you back towards the, e towards the edge. Very tactless to go around wearing one of his relatives. Whispers Traegard as you fall from the rock face. Ooh nasty. Because, yes, he wouldn't say, oh dear, he'd say, ooh, nasty. Yep, I was right. I knew it. There was no way that item was going to be of any use to you. Now, before I could go on again, I just want to br briefly highlight this. This is a project, to say, it's Castle Teletext, the first website. You can tell how old it is. Look at this. Maybe a bit crap. It's free for all until my Google credit runs out. 
When was the last time that that was a thing? Exactly. If I'm infringing your IP and want me to stop, you spot a bug, email him. Thanks to Al for getting all, all the original text, teletext pages. Thanks to Mark from Fighting Fantasy and other game books for actually putting it all together. And the Nightmare fan page is there because on Nightmare's fan page on Facebook is where this actually was came to my attention. One of my friends put a little light to it and I'm like, hello, I'll check that out. So let's now go back into the adventure. This time, I'm going to pick up because we fell through the ice on the, on, the, on the lower ground area, I'm saying the snowshoes will be more used to me. Of course, you don't actually need these. You can just beat the one quiz. But I'm curious about seeing as many of these options as possible. Strapping the huge snowshoes onto your feet. Step out into the snow again. Heading ever northwards, you come to a divide in the path. Oh, you make yeah, okay. We'll take the low road. The valley path is filled with snowdrifts, and as you push forward, you find the snow spilling over your snowshoes. Once or twice, you feel the ice below shifting as you step onto the solid-looking surfaces. But moving carefully with your snowshoes, you manage to make your way to the easier path beyond the valley. You are temporarily refreshed, but yeah, we, we'd seen that one, so we press on. Because that's how we got to the dome last time. Yep, so we got the crystal walls. And the sorceress awaits. We'll cast a spell. Only this time, we're going to direct it at the ice chandelier. Your heat spell flies off above the sorceress's head, but misses the chandelier. It strikes the ceiling, and for a moment there is silence. Then the great sheets of ice above your head shiver and crack. You hurry for the door, but before you can reach safety, CRASH! Well, says Trigard, that certainly brought the house down. So, with that in mind, let's get to the final page, because I'm going to leave some paths unexplored for you all, because I want some of you to have fun playing the game and analyse and get in your own step. So we'll go right to the end, and we will now actually finish this. And we'll do it in the quickest way possible. So we press on. We're at the we're at the entrance to the ice field, and here we are. So it's going to be spell casting heat because I don't want to get turned into a penguin. And this time, the only option is the frozen captive. Like in speed, shoot the hostage. Let's see what happens. The sorceress blinks with surprise as the ball of heat flashes past her. She turns with alarm as the block in the ice containing Sidra shatters, exploding under pressure from within. The heat ball turns upon Isandre, and she somewhat abandons her attack on you to raise a hasty defence. For a few moments you watch anxiously as the fight rages at the far end of the hall, but then the floor melts, and with a hideous curse, Isandre sinks from view. Sidra conjures the ice to reform and runs towards you. At last, one of my spells has worked. Now we must hurry up from here. I doubt my magic will hold her long. Spellcasting. H-O-M-E. Home. In the merest instant, you are returned to Castle Nightmare. Hordris is reunited with his daughter. Foolish one to risk the perils of the Ice Palace. He, ch he chides her. Well done, brave traveller, says Tregard. You have proven you worthy and have achieved your quest. You may now count yourself amongst the knights of Nightmare Castle. And it was written by a guy called Mike Cool. Nightmare is broadcast production for Anglia TV, so it's definitely region period, this. And whoever Mike is, Mike Cool, if you're out there watching this video, Castle Teletax would like to hear from you if you've not already got in contact with him many, many years ago. And if you like these 1993 style adventures, which you play, I certainly did. It's absolutely amazing. And I pine, actually, for the return of Nightmare. The show, for those of you who've never seen it before, was essentially like a kid's version of Ninja Warrior. That's how it was put by Spoonie in a comprehensive review before he entered his wilderness years. If you go and search that, I'll also put a link in the video if you want to watch. 
The only other follow-up to Nightmare that's really happened, aside from the fan-created live show, is that YouTube themselves did a Geek Week special, and it even featured Stuart Ashen, better known as Dr. Ashen's, he of the Brown Couch fame. He was in the show along with a few other YouTube celebs. It was a show that really tested communication, imagination, role-play, and the whole thing. Someone, please, bring it back. Join us again for a nightmare, because it's only a game, isn't it?